So you've been dating for a while now and things are great. You're hanging out regularly, your friends like her, her friends like you, and well, things are, you know, going pretty well. There's one catch, however. You haven't saved a penny in the last few weeks and months, and you're watching your credit card balance or your debt increase like an unhinged hot air balloon. Your girlfriend is making you broke, but how? And more importantly, how do you stop it? Let's start with how you got here. You see, when you're in love, you sometimes act dumb. And no, this is not an insult. In fact, it's not even your fault. Strong romantic feelings can distort your ability to think accurately. These intense emotions can cause you to make impulsive and irrational relationship decisions. Biologically speaking, however, there are a host of different chemicals that contribute to an altered state of mind when someone catches your eye. In a very real way, being attracted to a person is a lot like being on drugs. The release of chemicals into our brain and body creates an altered mental state in which we both perceive and behave differently than we normally would. For example, you may lower your standards to avoid loneliness or choose to stay with a bad partner because you fear you will lose them. That's why emotional intelligence is so important. This video seeks to highlight and reveal the true cost of entertaining just any demand from your woman and will also proffer solutions on how you can stop her from creating a hole in your pocket. Do these behaviors sound familiar? Number one, she wants to go out all the time. It's Friday. She wants to leave the house, nothing too crazy. Just meet a few friends for a drink or two at a local pub, maybe have a couple of appetizers and then retreat back home to watch a movie. I mean, it doesn't sound like a big deal, right? Wrong. Let's break it down. You're a nice guy and you're in love. So most likely you won't take her to a hole in the wall of a restaurant. You'll like to impress her, so you go to a fancy place. Between drinks, food, tips, and transportation, you could easily spend $100 on a single Friday night out. Convert it to your own currency. Do that once a week, and you're looking at $400 a month or $4,800 a year. Don't even get me started on full-blown dinners and movies, big night outs, or the tiny little extras like stopping on your way home for some ice cream. Now, even if you two are splitting the tab every now and again, all that socializing can cause some serious damage to your wallet. One or two nights out a week can break you faster than you think. Number two, you're paying her phone bills. On your own, you can manage the costs of having a phone, right? And of course, depending on which part of the world you're watching this video from, buying data is a big deal. Now, when she runs out of airtime, you're the first person she calls, expecting you to foot the bill. Painful part is she uses most of her data and airtime to call other people more than she'll even call you. Wise up, my guy. Number three, she wants presents. Maybe she's not an unreasonable girl. She's not standing there demanding you buy her diamonds and designer purses, right? She just wants a present every once in a while. Okay, that seems fair. The only problem is you go way overboard on your gift giving front. The average man in a relationship will spend between $100 and $120 on a gift for their lady, right? The problem, however, is this. There are so many gift giving opportunities in a year birthdays, Valentine's Day, Christmas, your relationship anniversary. That's easily 400 to 480 US dollars, assuming you spend 100 to 120 dollars per gift. And we haven't even started on those little surprises throughout the year or times that call for maybe bigger presents, right? Let's throw in an extra 15 to 30 dollars a month for something like flowers or you had a bad day cupcakes and you're looking at an extra 180 dollars. Let's take the lower end of all these numbers. It simply means you're easily spending $580 on gifts a year. And that's even assuming you have a reasonable woman who will appreciate such gifts and not want something more expensive, like a brand new phone or, you know, jewelry. Think about it. Number four, she wants to get away. It's just a quick getaway, a mini break. Well, guess what? That weekend trip could easily cost you well over $1,000. If you're driving, you've got gas and food. If you're flying, you've got plane tickets and all the costs associated with getting to and from the airport. If you're staying in a hotel, that's a minimum of $100 a night. Make it 200 indeed. If you don't want to hear how disgusting your bathroom was for the next three months, throw in three meals a day for two days. That's about $200 a day for both of you. And you've got yourself one expensive getaway. I haven't even started putting figures to all the activities you will be engaged in whilst you're there as well. Number five, she always has a financial situation. Now, depending on which part of the world you live in, you can start to hear things like my mother is unwell or family members unwell. You know, they need 
urgent medical attention. I don't have money to pay for my tuition. I'm broke, etc. Some women can quickly become orphans the minute they start dating you. This will mean you'll have to literally take on the role of her father. She'll come to you for everything. I mean, everything. Let's put a thousand dollars a year tab on that. Are you guys seeing how things are adding up quickly? In fact, drop in the comments below all the expenses you guys have had to bear that I haven't already mentioned. Let's see how these numbers really stack up. So how do you stop her wants from destroying your finances? It's simple. Be honest. If your budget can handle going out two to three times a week, tell her. If you can't afford a weekend getaway, tell her. If she starts to act cold or distant, trust me, she's not the girl for you anyway. You also have to be honest with yourself. Do you know what you can afford? Do you have a budget and a strong understanding of how much money you have coming into your coffers every month? If not, here's an opportunity for you to subtract about 10 to 20% of your take home pay for savings and maybe investments, right? Now factor in your bills and regular expenses like rent, utility, car insurance, along with other debt repayments that are, you know, you're dealing with at the moment. Whatever is left over is how much you can actually afford to spend every month on night outs and frivolous purchases. But this is a big one. It doesn't mean that you can get away with never going out, getting presents, planning trips, or spending on phone bills. It just means that you have to go about it a little differently. So hear me out. Number one, limit the night outs. Obviously try to limit your night outs to one night every two weeks or even less. If you like socializing, then something has to give either you go out and don't drink or you start inviting your friends over for drinks and dinner. If of course that's a cheaper option for you, it's something you should definitely look into because more often than not, it's always cheaper to cook at home than to eat out all the time. Number two, limit how much money you spend on her phone bills. I mean, if you live in the part of the world that deals with phone plans, you can renegotiate your cell phone plan before you spend a small fortune on over usage fees, right? Otherwise be honest about how much you're willing to spend on her and her phone bills every month, basically. Better yet, let her know that you're not in a position to take up that cost. Question you should ask is how was she surviving before you came along? Number three, save for your getaways. You want to get away, have a little vacation. Fine. Here's a catch though. You're going to have to save first, right? In fact, you're going to have to save 130% of what you think is actually going to be the cost of that vacation. It's the only way you won't drive yourself into debt on mini breaks and little trips here and there. Plus it'll make the experience so much more enjoyable because you know that you're paying for it maybe only once a year. You're also less likely to overindulge or spend frivolously with your own hard earned and saved money. So it's a win-win situation. Number four, save on presents. Now you can negotiate some kind of present limit with her. Trust me, you won't be less of a man if you tell her you're not willing to spend more than X amount on gifts every time. If this woman has your future at heart, she'll understand. Number five, don't take up any fatherly roles. Now you're not her father. I repeat, you're not her father. Never feel compelled to take on the roles of any parent. Depending on how old your woman is, she should be able to find ways to earn a decent living. If she already is what seems to be living above her means, it's in your own interest to pull in the reins. You simply must refuse to foot the bill of an extravagant lifestyle. Ask yourself, is this something that you're willing to spend even on yourself? If your answer is no, even in your current financial situation, you shouldn't be spending that kind of money on anybody else. Number six, develop your emotional intelligence. Now developing emotional intelligence is a discipline in itself and like regular intelligence, it can grow over time. One big way you can learn to develop emotional intelligence is by viewing the challenges you encounter in your relationship as opportunities rather than problems. Also, Learning to respond to a low EQ romantic partner appropriately is key. Knowing that we all don't grow emotional muscle at the same rate. If you're ahead of the one you love, pull them up by showing them a better way to handle relationship problems. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content like this and share it with another guy who may find this video helpful. Jessica here, catch you in the next video.